Is it possible for XRP to reach $10,000? Let's explore the realities. Currently, XRP is priced at $0.48, cents, which means it has a considerable journey to reach a $10,000 valuation. However, this goal isn't entirely out of reach. Ripple's XRP has the potential to overtake SWIFT, a move that could catapult it into the five-figure territory. Ripple's chief technology officer, David Schwartz, has hinted at upcoming enhancements for XRP that could significantly influence its market price. Recent developments have been quite promising, with significant victories in the SEC lawsuit, updates to AMM functionality, and other critical advancements, signaling a rapid adoption of XRP by major banks. Historical data shows that when there's a surge in institutional backing or major banks integrate XRP, the impact on its price is profound. For instance, when XRapid was introduced in early 2018, XRP's value soared by over 1,800%, although it has yet to revisit that peak. XRapid, designed as a swift replacement, remains a key driver for XRP's growth. Furthermore, a landmark decision in July 2023 deemed XRP not a security which greatly buoyed the community and sparked another rally. XRP's attributes of speed and cost efficiency over SWIFT underline its potential to eventually replace the latter. Looking ahead, the focus is on forging substantial partnerships and fostering global adoption to potentially realize the ambitious $10,000 target for XRP. As always, welcome back to MoneySide, your go-to spot for everything XRP-related. One often overlooked aspect of this technology is the cross-chain bridge, and who better to discuss its capabilities than David Schwartz himself? Now guys, listen to him to delve into the innovative features and functionalities of this remarkable technology. XLS38D is an amendment to support cross-chain bridges. This enables interoperability between different networks. Um, the XLS38D proposed standard will allow tokens from one blockchain to be locked in an account on the XRP ledger, while an equivalent amount of tokens is issued on another blockchain, increasing the use cases and adoption of the XRP ledger. The team has made design changes to XLS38D to support multiple bridges per door account for libraries, explorers, witness servers, and to improve user experience. I want to take a minute to explain why I think these cross-chain bridges are important and why sidechains are important. The XRP Ledger main network is great for payments. It's the home of XRP, and you can use it for other things too. But the idea that everybody will be able to do everything that they might want to do on a single layer one is just unrealistic. No matter how much it scales, there's going to be a limit. And there's going to be people who are going to want to do higher numbers of transactions. There's going to be people who want more computing power. There's going to be people who want very specialized transactors that demand a lot of resources. There's storage that can only, uh, you know, can only go around so much. And there's trade-offs with putting something on the XRP Ledger mainnet. If you put something on the XRP Ledger mainnet, every XRP Ledger mainnet node has to store and relay those transactions. And that creates a scarce resource that we can only divide so far. It's a, it's a lot, but it is not infinite. Whatever capacity it has, that's all it has. Whatever capabilities it has, there are going to have to be capabilities that it doesn't have. No layer one is ever going to be everything to everyone. And if we, if we don't want that to be a huge downside, if we don't want that to fragment the community, what we need is the ability to have asset portability so that so that XRP is not limited to the XRP ledger or other issued assets aren't limited to their home ledgers. Because if you want to build up some other function on some other ledger, you have to be able to get real value onto it. If you have to build a new token or issue a new stablecoin or just build up the sort of whole asset infrastructure from the ground up, that's going to stifle innovation. The other thing that it's great for is to be able to test out things that might be useful on the main network. I'll talk about hooks later, but hooks is a good example of something that you might not want to adopt on the main network immediately because of some of those trade-offs. No matter how good you think it is, it has costs associated with those benefits. And it would be kind of, it would be sort of risky in the extreme to just adopt it on the mainnet and hope that those trade-offs work out in our favor. The level of confidence that you need to have to risk harming the main network is very, very high. So these side chains through cross-chain bridges provide a ramp to be able to prove that a technology works in the real world, handling real money, show its impact to things like network stability, fees, and resource consumption, and then you can make a much stronger case for including it on the mainnet. So that's going to enable, along with some of the other things I'm gonna talk about, much broader development. David Schwartz brought up some compelling points. Firstly, the importance of testing these features on a sidechain cannot be overstated. Most financial institutions require proof of functionality before adopting new technology. 
demonstrating that these features work, backed by real-time data and transaction records from daily users, provides crucial reassurance. Moreover, the incredibly low transaction fees, often just pennies per transaction, further enhance the appeal of this technology. David Schwartz will share more insights, including specific examples of these side chains, further enriching our understanding of their practical applications. One example of a sidechain is the EVM sidechain. Nice thing about the EVM sidechain is that it's easy to develop on for people who know how to develop smart contracts on EVM. Developer teams at PureSys, they've been busy working on this, on this blockchain in parallel with the main XRPL blockchain. It is now live on DevNet. That's where developers can test implementations before they go live on the mainnet. The sidechain is connected to the, that XRPL sidechain DevNet via bridge. This is a decentralized bridge that's very important and it uses the XLS38D cross-chain bridging functionality to bridge to that XRPL network. So that's a bridge that connects the development network to the test instance of the sidechain. The next step is going to be to, to adopt XLS38D on the XRPL mainnet. Once that amendment is approved by the validator community, a new EVM sidechain can be launched to the XRP Ledger mainnet, as of, co of course, as can other sidechains. All components of this solution should be production ready to handle real world scale and real world use cases. The solution will be a decentralized one. Nodes will be run by different XRPL community members. The advancements we're discussing are opening tremendous opportunities. We're seeing enhancements like greater throughput, reduced memory requirements, and overall improved transaction processing across the network. These improvements will make it significantly easier for major banks to adopt our technology. David will expand on these points, offering key insights. Furthermore, a crucial component of this technology involves a node operating system that enables nearly anyone with the appropriate hardware to establish a validator type node. This setup will support the network's operations, much like other blockchain systems. And we also want to be able to add new features. Let's say we wanted to add hooks to mainnet. If we were right at the limit in terms of memory consumption and storage and I.O., there's no way we could add a, a feature that sort of takes resources. The AMM takes resources. The NFT feature takes resources. If we're at the limit of what our technology can do, then we can't add features. So these, these improvements are extremely important. And on the other side is uh, state stability and robustness. This is about not accumulating bugs. Old code is going to break. New code is going to add bugs sometimes. We have to sort of, we can't allow the bugs to sort of increase. So we fixed some node size estimation issues, an issue with sum totaling and gateway balances. We added the network ID field to prevent replay attacks. And we modernized the API to prevent, to make it a little harder to shoot yourself in the foot, like not accepting the seed and the public key. Let's face reality. Considering that even a meme coin like PepiCoin soared over 9,326% in a bear market, what could XRP potentially achieve? XRP is not just another digital asset. It represents a groundbreaking shift capable of completely transforming the banking and cross-border payment sector, the largest financial sector worldwide. Achieving gains of 9,000% or even reaching a $10,000 price target doesn't seem far-fetched when you put it in that context, especially considering the gains seen by something like PepaCoin. Some might point out that XRP has had ample time to reach these heights and hasn't yet done so. However, it's crucial to consider the external factors at play, notably the SEC's scrutiny, which has significantly restricted its partnership opportunities. Now, with the legal clarity that XRP is not a security, and with the SEC losing ground in other crypto cases, the stage is set for a potential explosion in adoption. The future of XRP now hinges on broader acceptance and integration by major banks. As consumers, we play a role in this ecosystem. By choosing to bank with institutions that support XRP and the XRPL, we contribute to its success and viability. If we all pull together, the goal of XRP reaching $10,000 could indeed be within reach. Please remember, I am not a licensed financial advisor. The content presented in these videos is purely for entertainment purposes. I always encourage viewers to conduct their own research and consult with professionals before making any financial decisions. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, make sure you turn on the notifications to be the first to know when I release new content. I'm excited to catch up with you in the upcoming video. Take care.